Today we will be installing the JSOX RGB transparent backplate for the ROG Ally Z1. So let's grab everything out of this box. So here are all your parts. Okay, you get some tools, some buttons, cable, your backplate itself. You get some uh, button covers. They also give you some gloves that you can use, but we're not going to use that. And then you also get a Pro Tool warranty card and a heatsink as well. All right, with all that removed, let's go ahead and install it. First, let's take everything out. So I can see here that you do need to remove the buttons from your original backplate and install them onto here. Everything you get is in this little kit here. They also give you some new screws. You get a total of six. They also give you a few different RGB plates so you can change them depending on what you want it to display, whether it be loading or these are the ones that they send with it. NASA, bio, caution, biohazard risk, and the PlayStation keys, whatever this is, I'm not sure. It looks like Chinese to me. All right, and then you have these blank ones that you can customize. So that's pretty cool as well. They also give you some um, adhesive rubber button covers for the back buttons. We're not gonna use that. All right, so first things first, let's turn this off and disassemble the case. Turn it off like normal Windows, start button, power, shut down. First thing you want to do is remove all six screws. Now, pay attention to this bottom right hand one because this, this one here is the shortest one. So just remember that. The rest of them are exactly the same. So let's remove these. These screws are very long, so take your time. So that's how long they are. And now just remove the rest. So that's all six screws removed. Now we will end up using the new screws and we'll grab our new screws and just sit them down ready to go. Right, now get your pry tool. They also give you a screwdriver to use, but I'm just using my electric because it's faster. Now go ahead and grab your pry tool and just go in between and push and pry and then follow it all the way around. Not too deep, just enough. There we go. And that's how you remove the back cover. Now, so here I'm just going to use the actual tool here. What you need to do is remove these two screws and then these two here. This one here, and there is a spring under here. So just remember that. Take that out, grab the spring, and set that aside. Do the same to this side here. Grab the spring. Now, to remove these ones here, you've got two screws. Now, in order to get it out, you need to pry it over the clip here. You can see there's a little white tab there. Just pry that off it, like that. That's it. And now your button comes off. Same to the other side. Just remove these two screws. And just pry it up or lift it. It's up to you how you do it. There we go. And then this side here. And lift. Now you need to remove these buttons. There's two clips. Push on the top and then push on the bottom and then push it out. There we go. It just flicks straight out. Do the same for this side. Push on that clip. Push on this clip. Keep pushing on them. To help it out, you can just use a screwdriver and just push it through. There we go. All right, so that's back cover is off. Set this aside. And now we need to install our buttons onto here. So the way this goes on is you notice how you've got a magnet here that has to sit in like this so when you sit it in make sure that the magnet here sits like that then push it on and install it so that's the way it has to sit so that it works you notice that tab there sits on the inside so we can press on the button All right, and then you get these two adhesive pads inside the box and you need to stick it onto there okay that's where it sticks just there as well make sure you do get it in the right place so now make sure that this lever here sits on the inside on top of the pad and then push it down and install it grab your two screws and screw it in so just like we did the other side, you need to make sure that you push this in first and then just push it straight down and put it in like that. Then grab your screws. One screw in, you're pretty much good. And there we are, buttons installed, ready to go. So you see how the button needs to work? When you push on this, that lever needs to come down so it presses on the button. So now to install these, so this will go on this side here, match the shape of it, and then push it in until it clips back into place. Grab your spring and sit it on top of your screw hole like so. Then grab your flat screw and screw it in. Do the same to the other side. Come in on an angle and push it in until it clips in. Grab your spring, sit it over the top and install your screw. All right, and that's it. Now we need to install our RGB. So in order to change it, you need to lift it from this point here and then you're able to change your logo. Now remember that it does adhere on, so it does stick. So whichever one you choose, make sure that's the one you want and then just stick it on like that. I like loading, so I'm going to leave that one. All right, so now that you have the backplate ready to go, what you need to do now is install this first. Okay, so just make sure it sits underneath and it sits perfectly in this groove, right? And then this is meant to install right here. You're meant to peel it off and stick it straight here because it is a adhesive. It's going to help draw heat as well, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it like that to show you what it looks like once installed. And then you install your back cover. Now you need to make sure when you install your back cover that you do line it up with the three tabs here as well. Just line that up. Okay, so you can't really get this wrong because 
as you'll notice here, you've got a screw hole that has to line up. And that lines up with this screw hole right here. So when you go to install it, this is what it's going to look like. You line it up and then you just line up that screw hole and then you push down. The rest of it will line up because the screw hole is already lined up. Now you'll see one, two, three tabs line up and you just push it down until it clicks into place. And now finish off the install by installing all your screws. But I've also got these instead of the black ones and I'm just going to install them over it. You just simply clip it over the top like so. It just looks better because it matches the white as well. And the good thing is that it still has the same vents as the original. So that's great as well. So there really isn't anything different compared to the original, apart from the fact that it has RGB and it's a clear backing plate. So it kind of looks a little bit cooler, but that's personal preference. Maybe you just want to keep the white one that has the Rog Strix logo like that. It's totally up to you. That's not a big deal to me. And that's what it looks like when it's done. Now make sure you test it before you screw it in. Make sure everything works. All right, so let's jump. Webs move, yep. We can aim with the left button here. There we go, we're aiming, good. And we swing with the right button up the top here. So we jump and we swing. Everything works as it should. Now, just to show you how the RGB works. So you have a button here and the charge port is here. It has its own built-in little lithium battery inside here. So you hold this button here and just like that, voila. Now you can change the colors or just turn it off completely. And now you can also charge it like so. See the green light comes on there. That's letting you know that it's charging. Another cool thing about this whole JS Ox kit is they also give you this little dust cover. So you see where your charging port is. They also give you this cool little white dust cover. So it helps you cover this up like so. And now you're able to keep that part completely dust free yet still be able to charge it. But it's a really cool little package that you get for the Asus ROG Ally. It really does help to complete the look of it and just helps you to customize the ROG Ally to how you want it to look. I mean, this looks fantastic now. This is more my style and I really love it. I've even done this on my Steam Deck as well. And the last thing I wanted to show you guys is this cool clear case that I got for it as well. Now, the only difference with this clear case is once you put it on, you are unable to control the RGB. So now we will install this, all right? You just put it, sit it on like so, sit it over the top. As you can see, all the buttons are showing, so everything will be accessible button-wise. And you just clip it straight on like so. And now you have a plastic cover that completely protects your ROG Ally. It doesn't take away from the look of it because it's see-through, transparent, and you can see the entire ROG Ally. The coolest thing about it is that it also has a stand. So you're able to connect a controller and play. Okay, so we can see the Xbox wireless controller. Click on that, we'll connect the device up, allow, and look at that, we are now connected. All right, let's do this. Do this. Okay. Everything works. Rapid response team Alpha, security chief Blanchard, I'll copy. There's the Omni movement. Look at that. That's one that Omni movement. Body cam's live. I'll keep eyes on This is such a small screen. It's better if you connect it to a TV, which I'll show you in just a second. You can treat it just like a normal console. 